the problem of Nigeria is not a problem of that we don't know truth. We know truth, but we like to walk in darkness rather than truth. When we are talking about the unity of this country, which is not non-negotiable, yes, but what is the problem? How do you enter into a marriage and then you enter into an agreement and one side of the region is suffering and you don't allow them to produce president? Then you are complaining about their agitation. Why will they not agitate? The Igbo have been so the Igbo race or the Southeast have been so deprived. I have good news for you. This revival you see will not be aborted. And they subject the ones to obey them. I see where we become slaves in our land. People must pray to God. People must stand on their ground. Then you want them to pay in the marriage. This is the problem of the Biafra agitation. If you cannot solve that problem, you will still have more in Andekanu. The Igbo must go protest continues to fester on social media. Nigeria requires all hands on deck. I need all us all, regardless of age, Listen. party, tribe, religion, or other. Then you want them to pay in the marriage. This is the problem of the Biafra agitation. If you cannot solve that problem, you will still have more in Andekanu agitating. That is the reason you cannot be preaching love and unity and be practicing the opposite. This is the major problem of Nigeria. Why will the Southwest, I mean, European man, continue to be in power? Why will the North continue to be in power? Then the, the major language you are not telling them you don't trust them. If you don't trust them, why are you keeping them? <laughs> Leave them. Let them come. I don't care how many of them are coming, whether they are, uh, whether they are in unity or not in unity. Give them the opportunity to prove themselves. The politics we go to the highest bidder. It has become a democracy, which is called monitocracy. It is about the one who have the money. And I don't blame them. The church we fold our hands and we say no. Uh, politics is a dirty game. All we are doing is to intercede. This is the problem. You will intercede and chop intercession when it is time. Those who are power brokers, we enter there, go into primaries, join a political party. This is the problem of the church. Who is for blind the church? Too spiritual. Politics is not only spirituality. You have to join the game. You have to belong to a political party. You have to follow and become a delegate. How many Christians do we have as delegates in most political parties? How do we influence? This thing is not of prayer alone. We have been praying. If prayer can change Nigeria, the intercessors in Nigeria would have changed everything. The problem we have, we have prayer warriors without strategies. Every regime has its own achievement. For me, speaking my mind as a citizen of this country, not as a pastor, we are so divided now. There's really a tiny line between unity and hatred or disunity we want to pray for the unity of this country we want to pray for the leader of the day or the government of the day to do the needful before leaving because the issue is not about handing over or taking over it's about handing over a more united country so that we can be solid it's not easy when a country is going the way we are going. There can be no development. We are going to pray. Of recent, I read in the news and I saw that the, the government of the day granted some prisoners some pardon, a presidential pardon. That's a welcome idea. Sometimes I ask myself if those ideas have factored in the unity of this country. Now, why you are giving people presidential pardon? Why don't you give people like Nam Dekanu a pardon that can unite the country? If the Igbos are aggrieved, no matter your no matter your grievance, 
we have to do things that will make this country to be united an average Igbo man will tell you that i don't think we are part of this country and that is the problem we are more disunited we don't know what the yoruba man is thinking if he takes power we don't know what the south south man is thinking if he gets power because there are some premises or some some things that have been laid now maybe if a yoruba man gets there right now we we'll tell himself this is the yoruba turn everybody power defense everything yoruba everything yoruba advisor yoruba everything yoruba and we will continue to have a deepening country that will be deepening in bitterness and disunity the reasons why people are appointed from different regions is to balance and bring unity in the country leadership is not just about protecting your interests it's about also uniting the country and they subject the ones to obey them i see where we become slave in our land people must pray to god people must stand on their ground our people should learn how to love themselves our leaders should look into the the children god trusted in their hands our governors when you establish security the security they establish at the time you call them and review their work whether they are still doing what you want them to do or they are now doing on their own there is nothing bad about security call a bag i don't see but time to time call them to review whether they are still doing what you ask them to do these are brothers these ones are looking for these ones these ones are looking for these ones these are brothers killing themselves some of you don't know what other villages are passing through now nobody knows what is happening and we have opened the door for enemy to enter i pray for our governors i pray for our leaders i pray for all the security agencies that god will touch their heart and protect them to do a good job <sighs> and they which you find out the ones killing people even in my village come triple down nobody knows see today nobody can give account so in this hundred days fasting and prayer i prayed every day and the Lord is showing me a vision, a vision that makes me cry. Is it going to happen in the next five years? But what will be of you if your land is being taken over? That God will help us and fight our battle. Amen. In these remaining days of this fasting, commit Nigeria in prayer. Commit Igbo land in prayer. That God will fight our battle and fish the enemies of the land out. People now are going, killing people. If you hold this one, this is this people we say is this ones. If this ones we say is uh, this ones that kill. This one we say this blood or hate people everywhere in the land. Checkmate the activities of the security you set out. Checkmate the activities to know what is happening. Whether they are not going to house to house, picking those people and be killing. Even one of the person that shot in my village, an old man. So we pray for our governors. We pray for our senators to really look into what is happening in Ibo land. That this vision, I pray it will not come to pass. Amen. That the Lord will fight our battle. Amen. And many people who have been caught, who have been victim of this are poor people the rich people all their children are in abroad 
I shed tears. I don't even know that I can be able to pray or preach when this when I, when I, when this message is coming and this vision is coming. I'm sure you have heard everything the men of God have said. Honestly, it's just a lot. I don't even know what to say, but I, I will say something definitely. If you are not from Igbo, I, I need you to understand this. Personally, I've had encounters with uh, Igbos. First of all, my, my grandmother is from Igbo. My grandmother is from Igbo, so I I have like a connection with the Igbos. But when it comes to encounter, like meeting other Igbos, I've had a series of encounters with them. I've associated with them and, and all the rest and I'm telling you that I've also I've had bad and negative experiences with the Igbos. Let's say for instance when I was returning uh, for, I was returning to Potako from Lagos. I, I saw this car that was loading the USA Potako Potako. I was in a hurry. I arrived in Lagos uh, from Ghana uh, at, at night, in the evening. Let me say night. In the evening. So I needed to get to Potako in the morning. So I wanted to pick the I decided to pick the night bus. So I I entered that I saw a car loading. Uh, whether is it is Uchuku transport or I've forgotten the uh, the name of that transport company. So I was hearing uh, Potako 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 Potako. I went to meet the guy uh, booking the ticket. I told the guy that oh please I I need to be in Potako as uh, by by morning. That I hope this car is going direct to Potako. They say yes. That am I not hearing them saying Potako Potako? I say I am begging you. If this car is not going to go direct to Potako, please let me know. I have something urgent I need to catch up with in the morning. They say no, that the, it is Potako and that they are leaving that night. I said okay, no problem. I booked my ticket and, and all the rest. I entered the car. I booked ticket around 8 in the evening. I stayed there. That car left Lagos by 1 2 the next day. By, by 12, sorry, by 12 1 the next day. So when we, we, we set off now, because I it was night, I, I slept off and then uh, as the journey continued, uh, okay, it was now morning. I noticed that they were taking the over the route. So I asked the, the guy in charge, the conductor, where they are going to. The person told me that they are going to a bar. I said, but I told you people that uh, I'm going to Potakot and I need to catch up with something very, very quick. Uh, in, in the morning the guy the response the guy gave me was that do i expect them to carry only me to potakot i said jesus christ but you people you are shouting potakot potakot we are about four or uh, five going to potakot only in that in in the full long bus i said then why are you shouting potakot potakot when you are not going to potakot i was honestly uh, it was so i was it i was pained i was pained okay we, uh, me and the other people that, that sat in the car, we said, okay, uh, give us uh, money, balance us so that we can pick a car from Owere going to Potakot. They said, no problem. That their August said, when uh, they get to Owere and we decide to go from there to Potakot, that they should give us only 2,000 Naira. Only 2,000 Naira. Whereas as at then, Owere to Potakot was about 4,000 something. As at this time, I was telling you, it was around 4,000 something. I was, I was totally, I was really pained. I was really pained. So I, I had no choice but to take that 2,000 and I went to uh, where to pick that car. I have had other, other encounters, negative, negative encounters that I cannot finish sharing here. I cannot finish sharing it, but there is something I also need you to understand that I have also encountered Igbos, people from Igbo, that are like one of the most beautiful people I've ever seen. I've also experienced, I have uh, had other experience with this, with the Igbos that if I keep sharing it with you, we may not end today. So I just want you to understand something that yes, even though that uh, some people are, are bad, yes. We have more people that are good. I keep saying it. You don't judge an entire tribe based on maybe one, two, three, or five experiences you have. You, you, you don't do that. You don't do that. It is not easy, but you, you don't do that. We have in as much as it's, it's like that in all tribe, even in my own tribe. 
I've had negative, so many negative encounters with my people. So it is just like that. So because of this encounter, you know, say hey, all these people they are bad. So you, you, we need to understand and establish that first that Igbos are not as bad as we make them look. We must establish that part. So now, if you listen to everything these men of God are saying, if you listen to it critically, the question we need to answer now is, are, is Nigeria and Nigerians being unfair to the Igbos? We need to ask ourselves that question. Because for me, I don't understand why... Sorry. For me, I don't understand why other tribes have ruled. Yoruba have ruled, Aosa have ruled, um, um, uh, they have also given power to people from the south south. Good luck, Ebele Junata. But Igbos, I have not seen an Igbo man in power. I have not. Okay, yeah, Yoruba have ruled, Aosa have ruled. Why not let an Igbo person rule at least to balance the equation? To balance everything up. Since I was born to date, I have not seen an Igbo man in power as the president of Nigeria. I have not. It's like they do everything possible to make sure that these people don't rule. Look at what happened during in 2023. It was clear that Peter Obi, Peter Obi was, in fact, I don't know how um, how we managed to lose that election. I don't know. I don't want to say it is rigging. I don't want to even talk about that because you see, it's like there is something they are not telling us. It's like there is something they are not telling us. It's like they are, there is something they are not telling us. And for me, I am beginning to think, based on what I have been seeing, that they are truly treating the Igbos unfairly. You see, somebody, somebody will come now, uh, why are you talking like, why are you talking like this? See, I'm not one of those people that you, I will see A, I will call it B. I speak the truth when it needs to be spoken. I, I, I will never be biased in things like this. I will never say, oh, this person is not from my tribe. See, you, you must learn to speak the truth. Call a spade a spade. These people are not, be Nigeria and Nigerians are not being fair to the Igbos. Let me not even include Nigerians. Nigeria as a country. The people, in fact, the people, they are not being fair to the Igbos. Because this 2023 election, Nigerians eh, threw their weight behind Obi. So I don't, how he did not win that election, self, eh, for me, I don't want to mention that word though, that they read. I don't want to say it. I don't want to say it, but you and I know what happened. You and I know that. Uh, uh, you and I know that they, they robbed this man. They did everything they can to make sure that he does not get into power. I don't know what they are afraid of. You say we have uh, uh, how many? Uh, uh, how do they call it in Nigeria? How many? Oh, is it region or what? I don't know. Ah, I forgot. Oh. I don't know how to put it, but please, I, I, I think I, I will remember. We have Igbo, we have Yoruba, we have Aosa. Igbo have ruled, um, Yoruba have ruled, Aosa have ruled. Why are you not allowing the top person to rule? Nigeria is divided into three, Igbo, Aosa and Yoruba. Why have, is it that the power keep moving from between these two outside Yoruba, outside Yoruba, outside Yoruba, no Igbo person? Why? Ask yourself that question. Just take a minute and ask yourself that question. It's just like you have three brothers that, okay, you are supposed to take it in turns to take it. A, a, a spoon of rice from the bowl of rice. I I have taken. The next person have taken, but we have refused to let the third person take one spoon. We have refused. If I finish taking my own spoon of rice, the other person take. Instead of handing the spoon over to the other person to take, I move it back. They move. They move it back to me. It's like they are. Not considering the third, we are not considering the third person. 
I'm sure you, you, are, you are understanding what I'm saying. We are three. This person have taken a spoon of rice. This person have taken. Give this person to take. But instead of giving this person, you bring it here again. Instead of, instead of even the self, if you decide that, okay, you, you will not give to this person. You go and give it to another person that is not even among these three. It is unfair. It is bad. And it needs to be condemned. It needs to be condemned. That is all I'm going to say. I'm not going to say oh, this, that, that, that. No, no. We should learn to speak the truth when necessary. The truth is important. The truth is important. So the only thing I'm going to say is that we should pray for the Igbos. Let us pray for them. Let us pray for them. Remember them in your prayer and also pray for our country, Nigeria, for God to restore order in this country. And I pray and I decree this hour that the will of God for Nigeria that is going to help this country move forward be done in the name of Jesus. Thank you so much for watching this video. Please do have to subscribe to the channel, turn on your notification bell so whenever I post another video, you'll be notified. If you don't subscribe, I want to say thank you to you. Thank you for always stopping by to watch our video. We love and appreciate the support you give us on this channel. May God bless you. May God reward you in the name of Jesus. Please don't forget, share this on all social media platforms, share with your friends and love them. God bless you as you do so. I'll see you in the next one. You are blessed. I have good news for you. Your will is being written. I am what I am by the grace of God. As long as that grace does not fail, Satan will never fail. This revival you see will not be aborted.